Well, when the freeze dryer doesn't work, it gives you an error, it's time to do some troubleshooting. So, I'm getting uh, unable to achieve vacuum pressure error on here. It's probably the fourth time it happened. Um, I'm not sure what's causing it. Uh, I, I open the valve, close the valve, restart the process, and it seems to, to work. But this last time I tried that, it didn't. So uh, I tried the troubleshooting guy, checked the seal on the door, checked the valve, I've done all those things, and this time it didn't fix the problem. So it's time to do a little troubleshooting. So I think I found the problem. I'm going to show you a couple of things that it might be. I noticed that uh, the pump down here seems like there's a little leakage of the oil right through the glass right there. I get it on my finger. A little bit of oil residue. Also on the bottom side of here. A little bit. So I'm wondering if maybe you know that's uh, causing just enough pressure loss in the system that it's not uh, able to achieve the vacuum pressure that it needs to freeze dry the foods. The other thing I noticed is in the back here I'll have to zoom in to show you, but that valve back there is loose and I'm wondering if it's not getting shut all the way because the valve is just over usage has finally failed and needs to be replaced. I'm going to zoom in on that and I'll show you what that looks like. Alright, well here's the valve in the back. You'll see that this handle has got a little bit of wiggle to it. I think that that valve is bad because, or at least the handle's loose or something, because that has some wiggle to it. But I can feel that the actual valve is not working when I move the handle. So the handle might be moving, but the valve's not shutting. So I'm going to change that out to a new valve and see if that fixes the problem. The only other thing that it might be that I can see visibly is that uh, this leaks a little oil through the glass right there. Not much, but a little bit. And then I also notice down here... Even though the valve's shut, it still leaks a little bit right there. I think that's just a loose seal there or something. Anyway, we'll do this last. I'll try the other fix first. Because fixing this pump would be the most costly part of the whole deal. That valve I can get for a few bucks at down at the hardware store. So we're going to try that first. All right, so I pulled the valve off, and maybe the valve isn't bad. Maybe it's just the handle, but, you know, you can see here that, you know, the handle moves, but the, the valve inside does not. But if I force it, it still shuts. What I don't know is if that uh, has got a, just a hair leak in there that's just causing problems, or it's just not... Because this handle's messed up, it's just not getting all the way closed. I don't know. I'm going to change it out anyway because I don't like this jankiness of this. I'm going to get a different valve that works better. All right. The parts store didn't have a better replacement valve this size. So, in fact, they didn't have any valves this size or this type. So, anyway, so I went with a half inch. Uh, has a bigger handle. It's easier to turn than this janky old little thing here. Anyway, but in order to use the half inch threads, I had to get the uh, the nipple here that reduces it down to three eighths. So this will go from the half inch here to the three eighths tube on both sides uh, out of the unit to this side with this adapter. And then uh, out this side with this adapter. So we're going to give that a go, see if it works. All right, I want to make sure we get this uh, threaded up nice and seal right. So we're going to put this uh, plumber's tape on these threaded connections here. Give that a good few wraps around there so we get a good good seal on the threads. Put that in there. Get 
the wrench here. Oh, well, that was a max size for that wrench. Okay. Tighten that down good. Ooh, that's in there good and, good and tight. One more. That's pretty tight. Okay, we're going to do that on both sides. And then now we can put this threaded connection back on for the hose side, which is the drain side. And then the one that comes out of the unit we can put on this side. All right, well, there's the connection coming out right there. I'm going to get that all Teflon taped up again. So I want that to seal good when it seals. Achieve vacuum pressure again. All right, I'm gonna wrench it down, and then we'll give the unit a go. <laughs> See if it fixes the problem. All right, we got it all put back together, ready for action. All right, uh, so far so good. Uh, it's drying successfully this time. We'll see if it airs out before it's done. I went ahead and changed the oil, put fresh oil in here, not filtered oil, but I put fresh oil, brand new oil, to see if that maybe had something to do with it. And I also cleaned the seal and put it back on in a different position, so in case it was worn funny or something. Anyway, so far so good. We'll see how it goes. All right, it looks like it uh, ran a batch fine after my fix, so no more errors. That's good. All right, this valve is in the closed position, but as you can see, back in the corner of that valve inside there, you can see that it's got just a hairline dark spot there, which is the gap that it's leaking through. All right, so the valve is closed, and just to show you that it's leaking, I filled it with water, and I can see it. It's already leaking out the bottom. See that water? Mm -hmm. No yeah. wonder it wouldn't shut off. Yep. And if I blow on it, you can see it drip. Alright, so confirmed. I did a test on this, changed out the valve, fixed the problem, I haven't had a problem since with pressure leak, and I'm sure that this is where it was leaking air because the valve is closed. I did the water test on it, and the water came through the other side, and I blew on it, and it had a pretty good drip when I blew on the top side and forced the water through, so you can tell it's not a good seal. This valve is junk. So anyway, replaced it, it's working great now.